Hello YouTube and welcome to another CA850 video. So today's video I am doing a loco review and today's loco in question is this new release by Hornby. It is the Hornby R3768 Late BR A1-A1X Class Terrier number 32636. So today we're going to have a, a look at this loco, we're going to unbox it, look how easy it is to, to chip into DCC and then have it running on the layout. So first of all what we're going to do, we're going to unbox it. Um, it is a bit tight, I have had a look at this loco, I've had pictures on the layout. Um, however, the issue I had was I had the wrong chip, so I've waited all this time for the chip. Um, it's in the usual block of ice, so there we have that, and the instructions. So what I'll do now, I've got a little bit of track to put it on. I will put it on the bit of track and we will be back in a second. So here we are back with the little terrier. Um, a little bit of history before we look at the actual loco. Um, initially the terrier was built for the London, Brighton and South Coast Railway. Um, class was A1. Um, as you can see, it's a 060 tank, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 3 the other side, and 0, that makes it an 060, and it's a tank because it's got no tender. These were designed by William Stroudley, of which 50 of the A1 were built, with um, a further 17 A1X built. All of them were built in Brighton. Um, nicknames, so initially they were Hooters. Then they got their nickname, which we're well known for now, which is the Terrier. And that was because of the bark it makes. And I've heard one of these go before, and it is phenomenal sound. If you, if you get to see one in real life, do it. And also the Hailing Billy, because these worked along the Hailing Billy line. Um, at present, according to good old Wikipedia, the most unreliable source, there are 10 of these in preservation. So, Hornby, um, as you may well know from the model railway program that was on recently, um, released this along with Rails of Sheffield, who are doing a version as well. So, what do we get? You get, for a good price, um, £80 you get this little loco. Um, detail is phenomenal. So we will come round to the front and we will just zoom in. Hopefully this will work. Focus. No. So, the detail is absolutely amazing on here, from everything from the chimney, the smoke box, and the way the application has been has been applied has been really, really good. Nem couplings, both ends. Um, some people like to remove them, but um, I might keep this on this logo, just because I intend to use it as a shunter along with my USA tank. And I do, I do like my little tank engines. I've got a few, a range for the layout, um, which will all be involved in a running session at some point. Um, buffer beam in red. The buffers are not sprung. Um, you've got down here, you've got sand. Oh, sorry about that. Sand piping. Um, that's the sanders for the driving wheels. Good little detail on the mechanism there, loco, You've got nice detail along the top with like the bars and stuff with the whis whistle and other piping is very very good. The bit that stands out for me in this loco, I'm hoping this should zoom in, it did a minute ago when I did a practice one. is the detail in 
the cab. Um, so what I'll do, I'll do an insert of the actual detail of the cab in here. Um, the rear, you've got fake coal here. Um, that looks quite easy enough to cut out and put real coal in. And again, good details at the back with the NEM coupling. And yeah, just overall, very, very good little loco. I've yet to see many reviews on this loco. So be looking forward to get it on the track and give it a little test. I might do a weight test with it, I don't know. Um, we will see how we do for time. So to chip it, um, I've not done that yet, but you need a six pin uh, DCC decoder and the instructions clearly state how to do this. So, to remove the body, there is one screw at the front and one screw at the rear, and then the body lifts up, and then the plug inserts there. So the instructions are really, really clear. Let's give it a go. Got it in the cradle. Um, I find it's just as easy to chip my own locos because the instructions are very, very clear. So we need to remove that NEM coupling there, that's gone. And underneath there, we have that screw to remove and that one. So I'll put the coupling over there, like that. And when I go to remove the screw, I'm gonna drop it that way so the screw stay this side of the, the other side of the thing. Um, because they are so small, you don't want to lose them. So all we do is, then all we do just that, that, and then it said, that's it. Blimey neck. So there's the detail of the cup. That is really, really heavy. But as you can see there, the, the detail, oh, focus, focus, is really, really good. I am only using a little, little camera. So we have one screw still in there and the other screw's there. So for the DCC operation, let's just get the chip ready. This is bad planning. Oh, don't cut the chip off, done that before. And then that's a whole thing. So as you see, the chip, you've got the, the pin bit there and the actual chip. So to remove the other chip, you take that out um, again if anyone needs any blanking plates give us a yell and according to the instructions it goes in and then hooks into that bit there we will see okay here we go that's Done. That's that bit. Apparently, that goes like that. We will see. And then the body. <laughs> it makes it so difficult. Goes like that. Trouble's got to be really careful. Oh, that was easy enough. Oh, that was easy. That was easy. Easy peasy. And then... Oh, I don't know. That just don't look like it's sitting. Yeah, they don't look like it's sitting properly. So what I'll do, I'll get it back in. It looks like it's going to be a pig of a job. Um, And join me in a second. Just got it in position. It just sort of just clipped and then went in. I hope this works. 
If not, it's a pig. So, it's a bit fiddly, but it, it did it. So again, it, chipping is just taking your time, um, and it's done. And just to make sure it's sitting properly, I'm happy with that. So that's that done. So the next thing we do, we pull it on the track. We will just give it a quick run in. Um, I've got some bits to. To, to test it with, we will give it a run in on the layout and then we will give it a little test round to, from Durley to Bishop's Wall and back again. Um, yeah, see you at the, the layout. So, welcome over to the layout. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to get my little rolling road out and I am now going to run it in for 30 minutes each direction. So, just to make sure I get the wheels in the right place, I'm going to do it like this. So put them sort of in position and then add it on. So this is how I do it. I know there's an easy way of doing things but it's the way I've always done it. So I'll move that out of the way. And then that and there. That there. there. So that's now on the rolling road. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to run it half an hour each direction and then we'll come back and just review. But we'll watch it just move off on the spot. Has it not been running yet? I think it's more the connection with the track and the thing. I just it's, it, when it moves... It's a very smooth. So as you can tell now, I've got it on the rolling road and we will just run it 30 minutes in each direction. And we'll just have a quick look at how smooth it is. So we'll run it forward. We're going to run it 30 minutes each direction. So like I said, forward to start off with. Um, we'll run it at 50% when it wants to. There we go. Bear in mind, it's the first time it's run since it's, it's got out of the box. So we'll leave it running 30 minutes. As you can tell already, that's a, that's a very, very smooth runner. Um, so we'll just leave it for a bit and just come back in, in an hour's time. So go and have a cup of tea for me. But for you guys, it'll be instant. So, see you in a bit. So that's that running for an hour. So what I'm going to do, I am going to do a strength test on this. First of all, we'll do a couple of shots passing with what would be the normal load on this layout. Then we will put it to the test with um, the HHA's Backman ones, which the Colas Big Locos have no problem pulling. So we will now have a look at this loco running at slow speed. So I'll just zoom out a little bit. And just to see it go forward at slow speed. Um, it's a phenomenal what you can do with locos now. And then back the other way. And that, that's it. So overall, I mean, looking at it, it's a nice little smooth runner. So if we put the camera around that way a bit, we will just watch it a little bit faster. Yeah, nice and smooth. It's very quiet, now it's running, it's very, very quiet. And that's it. So what we're doing now, we'll just do a couple of shots, like I said, with the little wagons. Overall, it's a very, very good loco. I thoroughly recommend it. 
the mechanism smooth, the engine smooth, sorry the engine, the motor smooth, the detail is phenomenal. Um, if you've got a little branch line or a little shunting yard then this, this is absolutely ideal and I think it will complement my um, steam fleet very very well. So I will now connect this up to its little train, run it past here for a couple of times and then we'll do the strength test. So as you can tell it's a very very smooth runner, um, it, it looks great pulling this little coal set. Um, so what I'll do now, I'm going to send um, my Colas 70 to go and pick up the 10 hoppers from the other side of the layout and just to show how well it moves it will bring the hoppers across the scene um, and then pull up and then we will put the terrier on the front and see how it moves. Um, I might use a 56 for the comparison on moving just to show how easy it is for a diesel loco to do and how hard this has got to work. I haven't got a clue how it's going to pan out but we will see. So I'm going to move the um, terrier out of the way to um, send the, oh, don't know what happened there, to send the 70 down to pick the wagons up. So here is 80, 7805 bringing the hoppers along and as you could tell no problem at all, no problem at all whatsoever. So yeah we will do a standing start with the 56 and then compare it to the Terrier and what we do with the Terrier we will take one hopper off at a time if it can't do it. So I will get it set up now to um, bring the hoppers down, put the 56 on the front and you'll see that in a second. So the grid, the 56 is now on the track with the hoppers attached. So let's see how well it does. So I've just put the lights on. It's not sound but there we go. Three, nice smooth Put it away, no problem. Into the corner. No problem whatsoever. So yeah, no problem whatsoever. So I'll send that back and um, we will now try it with the Terrier. So here's my little terrier, we will bring it back onto the train. Okay, so here we go, this is with 10. Hmm, I think we can safely say no. So as you can see I've put one at the back there, so this is now 9. Uh, nope. Right, let's stop, try another, take another one off. This is now 8. Ooh, a bit better. 
So we've got somewhere to take another one off. This is now seven. Oh, it's close. It's, it's moving, but we're struggling. Six. Nope, still not liking that. Five. No, it's trying to give it a little open hand. Nothing. Take another one off. Four. That's a bit better. I think we could just about get away with that. See how it copes on the bend. That's up to 10 on the controller, it's not too bad. No, no, it's struggling now. So I'll bring that back and I think we will, I think, probably be I mean, it's okay going backwards. So yeah, four at a push. Um, I don't think it'll be able to manage four loaded. I'm gonna try one more test. I've got an M7 handy. I'm gonna double head them and see if that, that works with the M7. So I'm gonna get that all set up and then we will take it from there. Not one to digress too much, just to clarify that this is a heavy brake. Um, the M7 is obviously slightly bigger loco, so let's put this to the test and just, just to see how it gets on with the 10 on its own. Um, yeah, not, 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 not going to happen. So we'll attach it to the um, Terrier to the, to the um, rake and we will see how that does with two. So now I've got both the, the Terrier and the M7. Just look at the size difference between them. Never mind. Right, let's see how they get on with 10. Um, if this don't work, I will see if I can hunt out another M7 and just try all three. But here we go. This is two. They're really not working in sync well, but it moving but the M7's really putting some welly and I'm going to stop there, I'm stopping, I don't want to burn the M7 out. Not really as good, so that's two traction efforts to the 156. Um, get it all set back up again and we'll put the third loco on. So here we go, we've got the three, two M7s and a Terrier. Um, if this don't work I am stopping this experiment because it just proves how heavy these are and the slack that that Hornby Poor 66 is getting. I will insert a clip after this showing you how well the Hornby 66 does, the new one. So here we go, last test. So, three, two, one. That is a lot of effort. The back one is really going it, but, but we're moving. We're moving. There we go. That's three little tank engines be able to move ten hoppers. So that concludes my um, little review of the Horn Bateria. Yes, it is a fantastic loco. No, it can't pull 10 Batman HHA wagons. And yes, I would really recommend one of these if you have a layout at all. Um, they're little powerful little machines. Yes, it's, it's a tank engine. You get what you pay for, for the price. It's marvelous. And for what I wanted to use it for, for this little set, um, and to work alongside my M7s, I can't really complain. So from me, it's Cheerio. Um, please remember to leave a like, comment, and if you like it that much, subscribe and have a look at the rest of the channel. Thank you very much for watching, and take it away, Terrier.